One of the things that is awesome but a bit unintuitive about Googleverse documents like Google Slides is the plethora of ways you can share them with others. Now, Google gives us a ton of options and customizable ways to share documents and slides and files and spreadsheets depending on what we want our recipient to do with them. In this video, we'll go over some of the fundamentals of sharing Google files like docs or slides in a variety of ways, especially focusing on the unintuitive parts where I see lots of people get confused or stuck. This process is slightly different for Google Forms specifically, so if that's what you're hoping to share, you might want to check out a different video, but if it's a Google document, slide, or sheet, or drawing you're hoping to share, then this is the video for you, so let's get started. Now the first thing I'd encourage you to do is having a clear answer to the following questions. The first question is what do I want the recipient of this file to do with it when they actually get it? Do I want them to be able to view, to edit, or to comment? What is the goal of sharing this? The second question has to do with whether or not they need their own copy of the file something that they can edit independently of what happens on your version of the document. You're going to want to get clear on these two questions before you start digging into the sharing settings because it's going to make everything so much easier if you have a specific goal or target in mind. Okay, once you have your intentions set, there are two basic places you can go to to share these kinds of documents. One of those places is here in the file itself, there's a share button, but another place is from within your Google Drive folder. We're going to start with this Google Drive list folder option because you can use this process not only for editable files like your documents or your slides, but you can also use it for PDFs or images or anything else you may have uploaded into your Google Drive that doesn't have the in-file sharing option or even for entire Google Drive folders. So here in this sample folder I see I have a bunch of different things including a form, a slide, and a document. Notice that when I click on any of these items, here I'll click out of it and then click back on it, a few little buttons appear here in the upper right hand area of my drive and I can hover over them with my mouse to see what they do. So this first one says get link, the second one says share, the third one says remove, and then this one says some more actions and there's kind of a pop-up menu there. The obvious choice for what I would want to click to share this would seem to be the share icon, but that's where people tend to get tripped up. By default, Google really wants you to share this to another specific Google user, but at least in my experience, 99 times out of 100, that's not what I want to do. I actually, most of the time, go with this direct link option so that I can just send it in an email or post it in my learning management system, and it's not going to require the user to have a specific login in order to use it. And so to get that, the way I, I almost always share files is I want to do this get link option. So I can either click here on the get link option or I can right click, and there's a get link option there as well. Either way, it's going to take me to something that looks like this. It's kind of the sharing pop-up menu and it's got two segments and the big highlighted one right now says get link. Now before we get into these specific settings, let's just click done and let's actually go into a slide and show us how to get to that very same link. So here we have the share button. There's really only one option so I'm just going to go ahead and click share. Again, this is a little bit where people get tripped up because it really looks like you should just start typing email addresses into this, and you certainly can, but like I said, I don't recommend it. Um, at least in my experience, a lot of people use personal Gmail addresses, and you may not know the Gmail address that they want to use um, as far as what account they want this document to be opened with or shared to. So again, I want to go down here to this get link area. They're both of the options are available every time. If the get link area isn't the big one, the focus one, just click down here on it and then it becomes kind of the big area, okay? So now I'm here in this get link area. Before I can copy the link to my clipboard, which is ultimately what you're gonna to wanna to do, I have to change this setting. The default in Google is going to be that the file is restricted, which like it says means only people added can open with this link. What you wanna do is click down here on this drop down menu and switch it to anyone with the link. Now anyone on the internet with this link can view. There's one other place where you have options and that's here where it says viewer and there's the drop down menu. I can choose to let anyone on the internet with this link be a viewer, a commenter, or an editor. Now this is where it's entirely up to you and those intentions you kind of set before we dove into this on what you want the person you're sharing with to be able to have access to and do. If you say edit, they will be able to make changes on your original document. You'll be able to see those edits happen in real time. It's a very cool feature. 
It's not always what you want, but sometimes it definitely is. Um, if you click viewer, they'll be able to see it. They will also be able to see your edits in real time, but they won't be able to make any changes. Commenter is a bit of a hybrid of those. Um, you, the person viewing it will be able to see it. They'll be able to make comments, which kind of show up as little pop-up balloons, but they won't actually be able to make any changes to the document. So definitely have given some thought to this before you kind of jump in and just go ahead and select the option that makes the most sense for you. I'm gonna leave it as viewer. That's generally what I like to do or what I need to do for my intents and purposes. And then you have to click copy link. And it's gonna copy that to your clipboard, okay? I could also highlight all this and like right click and copy. It's gonna have the same purpose, but it's very easy just to hit that copy link. Now, if I hit done, I can paste this link anywhere that I want. So let's just add it here in the body so you can see what that looks like. I could either do Command or Control V or I can right click and paste. And there is my beautiful little share link. Now, if you have problems, if somebody has problems getting to your shared document when you share this link with them, it's probably one of just a few places where things went wrong. One thing I see a lot is people just go ahead and do this very first thing. They share it to an email, but then the person actually isn't using that email to get to their Google Drive and it causes some confusion. So that's one place it can go wrong. Make sure you're almost always doing this get link area. And then the other thing that happens, and I've done this many times myself because it's not super obvious, is you have to make sure that it doesn't say restricted, that it says anyone with the link. Google will let me, if it says restricted, copy this link and it will let me paste it onto things. But if somebody clicks on it, they're not gonna be able to get anywhere unless I have made that anyone with a link change and then copied that particular link to the clipboard. One other thing I just wanna point out briefly is once you've shared the link with the particular status that you want, there are some other hacks you can use to make this URL even more nuanced. I can tweak basically everything that happens after this slash from the word edit on. I can change that in a bunch of different ways to force the person viewing it to make a template, um, to make it their own copy that they can edit, um, to have it in kind of a more preview mode. I'll go over those things in a little bit more detail in another video, but the easiest, quickest recommendation I would give you for this is to get this beautiful little browser extension. I'm gonna click on it now. It's called Sir Links A Lot. And basically when you're in a slide and you click on the browser extension, you can choose to get a force copy link, a preview link, a template link, or a PDF link, and then copy that link to the clipboard. It's just definitely the easiest way that I've found to get those sort of extra custom links. If you're not super familiar with Chrome browser extensions, you can just go to the Chrome web store. And then if you just search for Sir links a lot, it's gonna be the first one that comes up here. It looks like this. I've already got it added to my Chrome, but yours would say add to Chrome there. I highly recommend it. I haven't had any problems with it. It was created, I think, by a teacher. And it works really well for taking those Google file share links just to the next level, um, even beyond what you can do sort of natively inside of the documents themselves. So hopefully this helps. If you have any specific questions about sharing any sort of Google file, let me know.